Issue number eight, the final issue. That we are guilty of slander in misrepresenting Christendom's teachings in order to exalt ourselves by contrast. Even more serious, despite our poor tra track record, we have the unhappy habit of judging other religions. We are charged with slandering millions of Christians by suggesting that Jehovah's Witnesses are uniquely loyal to God in several outstanding ways. These include A. Using Jehovah's name B. Upholding God's word as inspired C. Holding firmly to the Genesis account of creation, the flood, etc. as opposed to modern scientific theories example evolution D. Preaching the good news to the entire world and E. Being persecuted for our faith into all these areas, we've heard it affirmed, groups or individuals within what we would term Christendom have led, we have followed. In response to the above claims, A to E, here are the rebuttals and counterclaims presented to us. A, God's name. The American Standard Version and Rotherham's emphasized Bible, Protestant translations, restored the divine name to the Bible a half a century before the New World Translation. Two. Many of Protestantism's most respected teachers have held the name of God forward boldly. B. Championing God's Word Many works by Protestant writers have championed the inerrancy of Scripture with greater thoroughness than has the Watchtower. C. Evolution and Pseudoscience Since the arrival of Darwin's Origin of Species in 1859, there has been a steady stream of books, usually Protestant, upholding the Bible's scientific accuracy. D. Missionary work. Every missionary field was opened up by Protestant pioneers. Some we might add Catholic as well. Even to the point where C.T. Russell claimed in, that Matthew 24 verse 14 had already been fulfilled by Christendom's Bible societies. E. Persecution. It is charged that Jehovah's Witnesses have the audacity to claim that their suffering is the real fulfillment of Matthew 24, verse 9, and Daniel 11:33, etc., when in reality the worldwide harvest we count as Jehovah's blessing was sown by Protestant missionaries and offered, often watered by the blood of Babylon's martyrs. So that's the end of the, the eight issues. This is the concluding points in our letter. All of these issues, as you will readily see, involve very important biblical principles. The reason they have had such a serious effect on the faith of both of us is that they reflect up upon the very faithfulness and discretion of the faithful and discreet slave. For if we claim that all the now abandoned doctrines of the society were light from Jehovah, as Russell did, we defame his reputation. If, on the other hand, we take the position that the doctrinal errors and wrong predictions were unfortunate rash theories of individuals, we then allow room for the critic to charge that the faithful and discreet slave were neither faithful to God and his word, nor certainly discreet in his utterances, and this for many decades. Even if we insist that all these matters are ancient history and irrelevant to the key issue where God's truths are found today, we are wide open to at least two broadsides. One, the charge of hypocrisy and double standard, for we definitely judge Christendom by her former deeds. Uh, the, an example we give is the endorsement of the League of Nations. Two, the charge of self-delusion. For most of the teachings we present, presently hold to be essential truths, uh, for example, no trinity, no soul, no hellfire, heaven for only 144,000, are leftover light from Charles Taze Russell. And critics insist even eventually, uh, will eventually go the same way as his testable teachings have gone to oblivion. Beyond all this, and even more important to present faith, is the matter of credibility. 
For the contradictions cited in the documentation, especially the fifth section, deception, must be explained somehow. Vivian and I have racked our brains for possibilities and have come up with but three. One, the errors and omissions in the modern accounts of our earlier history are the result of careless research. Two, they are the result of selective amnesia, a wishful thinking approach to the past, which all of us indulge in to some extent. Or three, they are deliberately dishonest attempts to conform the past to a pattern that fits our claim to be the one true religion. Opponents and some of our calls have claimed the last is the true explanation. While so far being unable to reject their evidence, we reject their conclusion. We cannot believe the brothers of the governing body or writing staff are purposely distorting history. However, to assume the contradictions and omissions are the result of careless research is ultimately just as destructive to faith in the organization. For some of these false impressions have been left unnoticed or unchanged for many years, contributing to the impression of deliberate deception outsiders hold. Vivian and I prefer to believe that something akin to wishful thinking is nearer to the truth. Even so, self-delusion is still delusion. It doesn't change the present reality that we cannot support an organization that is, according to the evidence so far collected, capable of deceit, even if we accept the deceit is not exactly dishonesty, but mer merely self-deception. The result is just the same. Vivian has only recently come out from a lengthy depression caused by the devastation, disillusionment, and sense of loss these discoveries led to. Brothers, please accept our thanks for giving attention to this letter. P please believe all of our personal turmoil has not affected the feelings we hold for those in the organization or the respect we have for the sincerity and hard work of you brothers at headquarters. The facts we've gathered thus far lead to the optimistic conclusion that perhaps we've all been captive to a concept, a sort of theocratic evolution theory, progressive light, into which, because Jehovah must always be assumed to be in control, the facts of history either fit or are forgotten. In the absence of other information, we'd like to assume that is the answer to the present dilemma and await what information and insights you can supply. And we closed with warm regards. I would have to say the last few paragraphs were really hard for me to read now mm -hmm. um, because I don't think I'd be as generous to them after 30 years of still seeing the same problems existing. Yeah. And with it being so available from a lot of sources online, uh, you know, people, a lot of people have left over these issues mm -hmm. and they're still not admitting to things and they're not changing things. And of course, all the brothers that we originally trusted are now dead. Yeah. All those leaders. Yeah. So we're going to publish a PDF of of this and this entire letter so if you mm -hmm. if you would like a copy of it so that the scriptural references etc you can actually have in front of you as you read through some of the references to the Bible especially those um, let us know and we'll send you a PDF thank you for your patience through this whole letter indeed <laughs>